this video provides an introduction to buffers. All right, we're going to set up here an example to illustrate the buffer effect in which we're going to consider the dissociation of acetic acid. All right, so we have uh, acetic acid to start with. We're going to use the placeholder name as opposed to the uh, full chemical formula. Okay, an aqueous equilibrium, and then that dissociates a weak acid. So it dissociates to protons and then to acetate. The equilibrium constant for this process is well known, 1.8 10 to the minus 5. And of course, that value of the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of protons at equilibrium, concentration of acetate ions at equilibrium, and then over the concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium. All right, great. So uh, we have learned until now how to calculate the pH or the concentrations of equilib at equilibrium uh, for a process like this is the weak acid in aqueous solution. And uh, we're going to repeat that just to uh, uh, illustrate uh, what would be the effect of adding uh, some concentration of the conjugate base of this weak acid. Okay, but before we do that, let's go through the ice diagram, calculate the pH, calculate the percent dissociation of the acid, uh, and so forth. All right, so we start here with one molar concentration, and that would be this will be our ice diagram. One molar concentration, zero, and then zero. The change will be minus x, 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 and then the concentrations at equilibrium will be 1.0 minus x, x, and x. And you come to this case of an expression, and then uh, concentration of protons at equilibrium is x, acetate is x, so that is x squared. Concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium will be 1.0 minus x, and that's what you need to solve. Here you can use the approximation of neglecting this x with respect to 1.0 because the equilibrium constant is quite low. And then you find that uh, x is equal to 4.2, 10 to the minus 3. And then uh, that means that this is the same thing as the concentration of protons. And uh, there's a couple more things that you can do. You can calculate what the pH is with this. You simply would take the base 10, uh, the minus base 10 logarithm of that number and uh, that happens to be equal to uh, 2.38. And one last thing that we can do is to calculate what is the percent of uh, dissociation of the weak acid. Remember that the percent dissociation of the weak acid is the uh, amount that has dissociated of the acid, which you can measure as the concentration of protons at equilibrium, over the initial concentration of the acid, which is one molar, right? So we will have here the concentration of protons at equilibrium, 4.2, 10 to the minus 3 uh, molar, over the initial concentration of the acid, multiplied by 100% to make it a percentage. Right, and that gives you a percent dissociation of 0.42%. Alright, so you can see that there's very little of the uh, acid dissociated, and that makes sense because this is a weak acid. All right, so uh, we're going to keep all of these values here uh, to compare them to what happens once you add a new solution to this in which you incorporate uh, the conjugate base of this acid. All right, so that would be pH 238, and then finally, uh, the concentration of protons at equilibrium uh, will be equal to 4.2, 10 to the minus 3, more. And we can erase all this just to make room. All right, let's see, for 0 0.42%. All right, so here comes uh, what is important uh, to make a buffer solution. To this uh, solution that we already have of the weak acid, we're going to add a solution that is quite concentrated of a salt of the conjugate base. All right, we'll look at the acid, and the conjugate base is acetate. So we need to add a salt of that conjugate base, which we're going to cho uh, uh, choose to be sodium acetate, that is also in fairly high concentration, so one molar. And then the question that we're going to ask is, well, uh, is this uh, addition, or does this addition of the salt change the way that the first equilibrium proceeds? All right, so let's uh, start to write here uh, uh, some equilibria. Right, You will have now sodium acetate, which is a salt, and uh, because this is a, a strong electrolyte, this fully dissociates into sodium ions and acetate ions. Again, notice that the interesting thing here is that, uh, put 
here one motor, then uh, initially, and then at equilibrium you have one motor and one motor once this one motor initial has been dissociated. Again, the interesting thing is that now you have these acetate ions in solution, and those are common with uh, the products of this first equilibrium. Right? So you have two equilibria that share a common ion, and again, that's essential uh, to the buffer action. The question that we can ask ourselves now is, well, how does the presence of these acetate ions that you're putting in from dissociating sodium acetate, how does that affect the equilibrium, the position of the equilibrium in, in, the, in the weak acid? Okay. Well, if we actually choose uh, Le, Ch Le Chatelier's principles ideas, uh, then we can say that, well, if you increase the amount of acetate that you have, then you're going to be displacing the equilibrium to the left. Okay, so that would be the expectation. But something that we can do is actually calculate it analytically because we have all of the tools. Right? The only difference here is that uh, you have now one motor initial of the acetic acid, but because you have added one motor of sodium acetate, you're also going to have one more of the acetate ions, right? So the uh, ice diagram changes in this fashion. Initially, you're also going to have 1.0 more. Okay? Right, so now we can uh, proceed and uh, try to solve uh, uh, the ice diagram for the concentration of equilibrium, then calculate the pH, then calculate the percent dissociation, and so forth. All right, so uh, notice that we don't have any products, any protons, so necessarily the equilibrium will uh, uh, start to go to the right, okay, but the changes will be minus x plus x plus x, and the concentrations of the equilibrium will be 1 minus x plus x, and then here we have 1.0 plus x. That would be the change uh, right there. Okay, so that is now your equilibrium row in the ice diagram. So now we have to solve for the concentration of protons to figure out what the pH is and the percent dissociation. So all of this is going to change a little bit. All right, so notice that uh, your case of A now is going to be equal to uh, the concentration of protons, which is x, then the concentration of acetate, which is 1.0 plus x, and then the concentration of acetic acid, which is 1.0 minus x. This is equal to 1.8, 10 to the minus 5. All right, so uh, let's try to solve for this. Uh, the approximation is going to be that, well, uh, because we're actually pushing the equilibrium to the left, is uh, what's going to happen is that the amount of acid that dissociates is going to be very small. This x is going to be very small, and what that means is that you probably can neglect it uh, with respect to uh, 1.0 in both the denominator and the numerator. Right, so what we're going to do is again neglect this x with respect to one in the denominator and the numerator, and of course, what uh, the result that you get out of this is that x is equal to 1.8 10 to the minus five. All right, so we can already start uh, to start these comparisons with what we had before. When you calculate the pH of this, okay, the pH is equal to 4.74. The concentration of protons, which we have right here is equal to 1.8 10 to the minus 5 molar. And uh, you can clearly see what has happened here. right? Notice that adding acetate has indeed displaced, uh, uh, shifted the reaction towards the left. Okay, That means you have fewer protons. right? So there's uh, fewer protons than you had before, and the pH is therefore a little higher. We can further substantiate this by calculating uh, the percent dissociation of the acid. And again, the calculation that you do for this is simply take the concentration of protons at equilibrium, which is a measure for how much of the acid has dissociated, divide over the initial concentration of the acid, multiply by 100%, and that's what you get. Right, so for this particular uh, uh, set of numbers, what you find is that the percent dissociation is now 0.0018%. Okay, and this is a very revealing. Notice that when you have the acid by itself, it dissociates 0.42%. When you have, when you add a, a, a salt of the conjugate base, it dissociates much, much, much less. You can see that there's at least a factor of 200 difference in the amount of dissociation. This dissociates 200 times more than that. All right, so again, this is all, all in full expectation uh, with the uh, only full agreement with the Le Chatelier expectation. Okay? We can take one step further and then uh, recalculate here where the concentration of equilibrium would be. Okay, so notice that x is so small, okay, 1.8 10 to the minus 5, 
that you truly have simply 1.0, the concentration of protons will be 1.8 10 to the minus 5 molar, and then the concentration of uh, acetate will be 1.0 one, uh, 1 molar as well. Okay? So uh, this is going to uh, inform the last bit of the discussion in this video. Okay? And that is as follows. When you add uh, a weak acid, okay, and combine that with a solution of uh, a salt of the conjugate base, and both of them are in high concentrations, what happens is that the concentration of HA that you have initial is about the same as the concentration of HA that you have at equilibrium. Okay, can notice that uh, in this case, even though we have added, added uh, uh, acid ions and there's a little bit of dissociation. The dissociation is so small that for all intents and purposes these things are the same. And the same thing happens for the conjugate base. Right? Uh, the concentration of the conjugate base that you start uh, with is identical to the concentration of the conjugate base that you have in equilibrium. Uh, let me rewrite here what the equilibrium reaction looks for the uh, salt of the conjugate base. Again, remember that we start with 1.0 molar and then uh, no uh, ions, but then once the uh, full dissociation takes place, you have 1.0 molar, 1.0 molar, and you can clearly see that at equilibrium, you still have the 1.0 molar. Okay, so these two things happen, and again, the conditions are as follows. You need a weak acid, you need uh, a salt of the conjugate base, and both of those have to be in reasonably high initial concentrations. For us, the cutoff is going to be that these concentrations initial of uh, the conjugate base and the weak acid, they have to be larger than approximately 0.1 molar. When you have uh, this sort of, of um, uh, requirements, then you get uh, this effect, which we're going to call in a little video, uh, in, the, in a later video, the buffer effect. And it's a buffer, buffer effect because these concentrations that we have made this way tend to resist the addition of small amounts of acid and uh, small amounts of base very well. Okay? Uh, so so uh, what happens with these buffers is that they have a pH, right? and again, adding a little bit of acid or a little bit of base has very little influence in the pH. We can try to start to see why that is, but again, considering uh, this equilibrium. So what happens if you have lots of this and you have lots of that in solution. Right, so now if we add a little bit of acid, what will happen is that, well, uh, you're increasing that concentration, so you will tend to displace the equilibrium to the left. Okay, but notice that that equilibrium uh, already has quite a bit of that weak acid to start with. Right, so the amount, uh, the relative uh, new amount that you, that you generate of that weak acid is going to be quite small compared to what you already have. And what that means is that the pH changes very little. The same thing would happen if you add a little bit of a base. Right? If you add a little bit of a base, then uh, you will be reacting these protons and turning them into water. Uh, what that means is that the system will shift to the right. Okay? However, you have a large amount of acetate already. So what happens is that the new amount that you produce from that displacement to the right is very small relative to what you already have. And again, what that ends up meaning is that uh, the overall pH change that you observe is actually rather moderate. And again, that's what we call the buffer action. All right, so let me summarize this video here. What we've done is uh, we have examined the properties of solutions that are made with a high concentration of a weak acid and a high concentration of a salt of the conjugate base of that weak acid. Uh, those are uh, solutions that we're going to be calling buffers. And in the next video, we're going to uh, see how adding a little bit of base or a little bit of acid changes the pH of those solutions very moderately.